Nikki Haley has a message for the GOP primary base. Vote for me or you'll get President Kamala Harris. Haley made that pitch that she should be the nominee on a Newsmax appearance, claiming that Trump would lose the general election. Let's watch. Let's speak some hard truths. If Donald Trump becomes the Republican nominee, we will get a President Kamala Harris. You mark my words. Mm -hmm. He cannot win a general election. Look at Iowa, look at New Hampshire. He can't get independents. He can't get suburban women. He's losing Republicans who say they don't want him and will vote for someone else. It's a problem. This is not personal for me. I have no problems with Donald Trump. I voted for him twice. I was proud to serve in his administration. This is about the fact America can't lose again. We lost in 2018. We lost in 2020. We we lost in 2022. How many more times do we have to lose before we realize we have got to right this ship? Now, Nikki Haley's plea came as Republican voters seem surer than ever that former President Trump will, in fact, be the man to take on Biden in the general election. Real Clear Politics has Trump with an average 58-point lead over his competition, with a recent morning consult poll showing a 63-point lead over Nikki Haley. Haley can't seem to catch a break on the campaign tra trail either. During a recent stop, Haley was met by a protester who was really feeling the never Nikki message. Let's take a look. Only way we will get that done. None of us want new wars. None of us want new wars. interesting to see her specifically there getting uh, pushback for being hawkish, uh, which is a, a, a wild kind of turn of events if you think about where we were and the Republican Party was uh, 20 years ago during presidential campaigns, but I think a, wel a welcome sure. turn of events. It's changed a lot since then, and I've, I've said it many times, on that issue, on foreign policy, she is out of step with where a lot of people on the right are now. Uh, that's yeah. not, all of her views are not out of step. And I think, you know, when she's making the pitch that she's more electable, she has some data on her side. The, the same polls that show Biden, in fact, beating, uh, show Trump, in fact, beating Biden, show that she would do even better than Trump. If you want to, you know, room right. for error here, um, I think that is a solid pitch. And then also there's all the question of whether Trump gets somehow disqualified for various legal reasons, right. um, which is, you know, why she's staying in. But at the end of the day, Trump is, if it's coming down to voting, Trump is go absolutely going to be the nominee. He has a commanding lead. New Hampshire is now in the uh, rear view uh, mirror where that was her best chance to do something. She had a impressive showing, but did not did not win and has no prospects really for winning down the home stretch. Yeah, so what are we doing here? <laughs> there's something really ironic and frustrating that the issue that might enable there to be a breakthrough candidate because of how much broad discontent there is with American interventionism is not being embraced by any of the candidates that pose the greatest threat because of their war chests and their, their, their broader um, popularity and the like to the leading nominees. And this is a frustra that frustration that you can apply to Nikki Haley and also one that the left has raised about Marianne Williamson, um, who has, I think, largely not touched the level of enthusiasm that Bernie Sanders had in the last two cycles because of this particular issue and the way that it's emerged at this particular time with the siege on Gaza that was really the nail in the coffin. And I, I, I don't know what to do with that. It does seem really frustrating that even though there are, what, 70 percent of Democrats who would prefer Biden not be the nominee, there are very few challengers at all, much less those who are really appreciating what it is that the public dislikes about that candidate and same on the other side. Yeah, I mean, there's no way around it. The GOP primaries have been covered basically correctly by the media as a, as a competitive primary where sure. maybe, I, I'm sure you can point to specific weeks or aspects of coverage where competitors to Trump were being given more of a benefit of a doubt than they deserved, or maybe their odds of doing well were being drummed up a little bit by a, by frankly, a Trump wary, a, a, a sick of Trump media on the right mm. itself. I think a lot of people on the right, despite what they say publicly, really wished yes. a Ron DeSantis uh, or Nikki Haley were going to, um, I mean, some of them on Mike Pence, were going to uh, get over the finish line, and they didn't really come close to that. But 
it wasn't, it was Trump's to lose, but there were a lot of, you know, out there, there were a lot of questions about what exactly was going to happen. Maybe someone was going to catch on. There were times before the indictments came out where DeSantis was getting, was getting within striking distance. And then in some of these specific states, obviously Nikki Haley was not that far behind Trump in New Hampshire. So I think it was covered basically correctly. It's not, it's not that, it, that's not the issue. The issue is on the Democratic side. It's not been covered like anything approaching competitive at all, just that it's a coronation for Joe Biden, even though there's widespread and massive dissatisfaction with his candidacy. And there are people running against him who are getting some level of, of interest. Uh, I think, you know, RFK Jr., when he was still running against um, Biden within the Democratic uh, primaries got, he was getting a lot of attention from right-wing media, favorable attention, and then he got, you know, his, like, two weeks of, oh, my God, this wild conspiracy theorist is actually polling high. What does this say about misinformation, you know, the kind of fainting couch coverage uh, was generated by the mainstream media for a few weeks, and then that was all over. Yeah. Well, speaking of the left's relatively unfair coverage of the primary that they're denying is happening, um, Glenn Greenwald pointed out that Trump in a, for the poll that we just mentioned, has a 63-point lead over Nikki Haley and is still being covered in the liberal press as though she has a, a real shot here at, at clinching the nomination. And, and many of those commentators, I will say, are doing so in a self-aware way. I was listening to an episode of Pod Save America the other day where the former Obama speechwriters that host that show were like, look, it's not that I think she's going to win, but obviously my interests are that she stay in the race as long as possible because any shot at Trump is good for my interests. I think that's mm -hmm. a fine position to take being politically self-aware and honest about one's own political perspective. But Glenn's making a slightly different point. He's saying that there is a kind of attention and seriousness with which uh, Nikki Haley's campaign is being treated that is not being given to Biden challengers, despite the fact that his lead over his challengers is, in fact, smaller than Trump's need over, uh, lead over Nikki Haley. And what do we do? What has the nature of the coverage of, let's say, Dean Phillips coming out of the New Hampshire result been in the liberal media? Is he getting any of the kind of bump that could actually give him the energy that Nikki Haley is getting as she's doing the rounds and all of these liberal news sources? Yeah, like I just said, I'm not sure that it's Nikki Haley's getting too much attention, but rather that Marianne Williamson and Dean Phillips are not getting enough attention. Sure. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that point. Um, I, I, the numbers are probably kind of similar at this point. Uh, Trump's level of dominance over Nikki Haley versus Biden and Marianne and Dean Phillips. But obviously, Marianne and Dean Phillips haven't, you know, enjoyed nearly the same level of coverage and exposure to a national audience that Nikki Haley has. Um, so, so they're you know, they're, um, they're, they could be doing even better if they got, you know, regular town halls and debates and all of the att uh, press attention Nikki Haley is getting. So I think it's a, a fair point. Of course, on the, uh, but then just on the GOP side, there is the Trump could be, again, I don't expect that to happen, but Trump could be disqualified, which is why she's honestly holding out. She's right. more likely to get the nomination that way than beating him in the actual primary elections, which is not going to happen. Right. And some people believe that, uh, you know, Joe Biden isn't going to perhaps have the physical stamina to get through uh, this campaign. Well, I, th I think he doesn't, but he's going to attempt it anyway. Uh, I mean, there, yeah. I mean, but no, what I'm saying is that there are people who believe that he doesn't and that there is already a plan in place to pull him at the convention. Like that, that is what people. Maybe so there, Nikki there, Haley there, believes there that, which very, is why she, she said Kamala Harris right. there. And, and those are very, they're very similar tracks here. I don't know. There, there's a, there's a bizarre parallels mm -hmm. happening on both sides uh, of this race that are justifying people staying in. But again, that, that yeah. points to the difference here. I, I, I do want to, I do want to mention this, this poll result before we go, because we are still talking in the context of the two-party system. RFK Jr. has our, obviously broken out of that, as have Cornell West, um, Jill Stein, uh, and Claudia De La Cruz, who is a Socialist Party candidate that we haven't mentioned here before. Um, but uh, the, the, the poll uh, asked ask the question um, whether or not, quote, I am satisfied by the two-party system of American politics, and I, I am not satisfied by the two-party system of American politics, and I want a third choice. 52% of Americans agree with that statement. 52% of Americans want an option outside of the duopoly. Only 26% uh, disagree. That's from a Reuters Ipsos uh, poll that was taken uh, just last week. Mm. Something to consider since the primaries are not, in fact, over. More rising right after this.